So you done the hard work, you saved up the cash, and you realized you like your M cars with six cylinders and wide arches. You started looking for an E46 M3, but you've realized there's a lot of cars on the market and finding out what's a good one or a bad one can be quite difficult. You might have started looking online, but a lot of the buyer's guides are quite outdated with these cars now being 20 years old. Well, you come to the right place. Here at Shooting Break, we're huge fans of the E46 M3 and M cars in general. We've sold our fair share of them and we've got a couple between us ourselves. We're here to talk to you today about what makes one of these a good example and what the market is like today in 2023. To demonstrate what a good one looks like for you today, we've got Chanel from SY Invaliting to bring us personal steel grey E46 M3 convertible here today at ultimate velocity. This very car is coming to shootingbrake.com and auction and Chanel is going to talk us through what makes this car such a good example of an E46 M3. So here we are today with my personal E46 M3. I'm just gonna talk you through the whole car, what's been done to it. So if we start over here, part of the process was sending the hubs and the front subframe off to be powder coated. And it had all new suspension fitted, so Lem Forder inner and outer track rods, uh, genuine BMW lower control arms, along with Powerflex anti-roll bar bushes, and HEL braided lines. Along with that, it's got CSL 345mm discs with six pot M4 Mons Brembo calipers. Um, moving on to the other side, it's all exactly the same, just as good. And again, starting with one of the big jobs, it's had the rod bearings done. They were done with ACL bearings and then also had a genuine sump gasket and engine mounts done at the same time. So if we move down the car, we can obviously see the underbody is in pretty good condition. Some work has been done with the rear floor grommets being cut out and welded. That was on both sides of the car. As you can see, it's been seam sealed again and then the OEM color matched as best as. The exhaust is a Miltec DCAT with a twin center res delete and moving on to a Cobra Sport back box in the back. But as you can see, the usual bits of corrosion between the seams, this car doesn't have it. It has been protected with Lano Guard, which is a self-sealing product for the underbody. So as you can see, it's kept it in really nice condition. Moving on to the brake lines, it's had brand new OEM BMW steel lines in black. And they are obviously done all the way above the floor, as is correct from factory from BMW. And if we move down to this side of the car, you can see the jacking points have got no signs of bending in as they do on some cars, completely rust free. All of the silk panels have been off, including the rear and front arch wheel splash guards, and they've got no corrosion whatsoever. I'll just pop over to here as well. Once again, no corrosion on um, the jacking pad and it's nice and straight. Moving on to the rear of the car, as we know, BMW M3s can have some big bills. It's had a genuine diff from BMW in 2018. Bill was about £3,700. And then if we move on to here, it's had two new drive shafts. It's had genuine rear shocks uh, and springs, sacks. That is also the same on the front. The, all the bushes and ball joints on the rear end are new within the last six months. Um, it's had new genuine backing plates. This caliper has been rebuilt and all of the um, bushes and ball joints will have a lem folder, or except for the rear trailing arm bushes up here, which were Powerflex. And as you can see over here, the rear trailing arm tub pockets are all really nice and rust free. There's no corrosion whatsoever, which is another quite common area for these to rust. And then if we come up to here, this is the Cobra Sport back box. Obviously it is a full exhaust and it's mapped to suit to um, prevent the engine management light. And we can also see if we come here that the boot floor has been reinforced. This was done by a BMW specialist and uh, with a reddish V2 reinforcement kit. And there's bills for approximately £4,000 when that work was done. Right, so carrying on with some of the big jobs that are well noted on uh, E46 M3 forums is the Vanos system here. So often when you buy an E46 M3, it will say Vanos done, but it's just the seals. This has not only had Bezan seals, this has had the full catalog of hack engineering parts to it. So that includes the uh, Bezan exhaust Vanos hub, the oil pump disc machining by hack engineering, 
um, the S62 diaphragm seals, all upgraded bolts um, from BMW, the braided Vanos um, oil pressure line, along with a brand new genuine BMW solenoid pack, which they usually get rebuilt. I decided to fit a completely new one, including the metal block. And then other things to note in the engine, it's had its inspection two done. Um, its valve tolerances were checked and all okay. It had six new coil packs. It had an intake cam sensor. And then another big job, especially with SMG, where a lot of it puts a lot of people off SMG, is the SMG pump. This had a brand new SMG pump from BMW, which is not a cheap part. It's over 2,000 pounds. And that's also been replaced as well. Chenille's E46 M3 convertible is one of the best on the market. It's a great spec and it's had an absolutely unreal level of care, thought and investment put into it. We're going to run through a general buyer's guide later on in this video and as you'll see Chenille's car ticks every single box and then some. It's coming straight to shooting brake on auction and will be set with an attractive reserve. Before you bid though, I'm sure you want to see what it's like to drive. So we've got Chenille's steel grey E46 M3 SMG convertible here today. It's an absolutely gorgeous example of one of these cars. We're not gonna do a full review of this car today because we've already driven an E46 M3 convertible on the channel. Instead, I'm just gonna tell you about, first off, what an SMG car is like to drive, and second off, what makes this particular M3 such a good example. So, SMG. SMG is a sequential manual gearbox. It's the same mechanical gearbox as the six-speed manual cars, but the clutch is electronically actuated and the gears are selected on these paddles or the sequential shift down here. The ratios are the same, the diff ratio is the same, mechanically it's all the same, but you basically just don't do the clutch. And everyone's got an opinion on SMG. I personally think it's a great system. The manuals in e 47 threes it's not the best manual. It's quite rubbery and notchy and quite awkward clutch pedal. And the SMG has two big benefits that I personally love. First off, you get to keep both hands on the wheel. So when you are driving this at 10 tenths, ultimately it is an M3. It means you keep both hands on the wheel, keep both hands at nine and three, and you have full control of the steering and you can just focus on placing that gorgeous front end into a corner, which is really nice. The other advantage is, again, with this being an M3, it's a car you want to be able to use regularly, it's a car you want to be able to use in traffic, on road trips, all that kind of stuff. And the auto mode in SMG isn't the best, but it does allow you to creep forward without having to use a clutch, without having to modulate it, without having to think about it. The car does all the work for you and you can just move forward in traffic without having to think about it too much. Driving a manual M3 in standstill traffic or stop-start traffic on the motorway can be so frustrating because they're quite a snatchy clutch, the shift is quite heavy and notchy, and there's just a lot more thought required, especially with an S54, because it's quite an aggressive engine without having individual throttle bodies, a quite a sharp electronic throttle pedal, and being a high compression engine, you have to think a lot about having to drive it smoothly. SMG is a lot easier, it's a lot nicer. Do you miss the clutch pedal? Well, it depends on your driving style and what you like ultimately, but before you pick up any misconceptions about the SMG, it's worth driving one and seeing what you actually think about it yourself because not everyone's gonna like it, but the people who do, I think it really suits them. And the way to think about it is that this isn't a DCT, it's not an automatic. If you come in with those expectations, it's gonna disappoint you. But if you come in with expectations of it being a manual car, but just being a little bit more exciting at 10 tenths and a little easier to drive around the town, I think it's a great system. Now, Chenille's E46 M3 is a great example of the differential between a good example and a bad example on the market. First off, we're cruising along in fifth here at 30 miles an hour. The car's smooth, it doesn't hesitate at low revs. There's no uh, jump in power when you hit two or three K, which would indicate a Vanos fault. And there's no pinking, which is when the car would hesitate and feel like it's hitting a brick wall at around two and a half, three K. Those things all indicate that the S54 needs work. Vanos is quite a big job and these has been done. And if the head gasket goes, you get what's called predestination, which is when you get uh, combustion occurring between cylinders uh, which causes the car to hesitate and kind of rock you forward with that sort of power. This 
pulls smoothly all the way from idle to 8K. There's no drop off in power. It builds the power consistently and smoothly, which is exactly what you're looking for in S34. Uh, if the power was to drop off at 6 or 7K, it would be indicative of a dodgy MAF or cam position sensor, and neither of those things are cheap on these. The other thing is, steering through this gorgeous reach rim steering wheel, we're tracking arrow straight. There's no knocks through the steering, there's no creaks. Steering super pin sharp. Sometimes the uh, rubber coupling in the, steering, in the steering column can get worn on these. On this one, it's really nice. Got the roof down, sun's out, kind of. It's just a nice place to be. Got a lovely reach trim steering wheel here. A lot of people, when they get their steering wheels re-trimmed on E46M3s, they get them padded out thicker. This one that hasn't been the case. It's really nice. It feels like an OEM one, but it's got perforated leather, which is great on a summer's day. Overall, if you sit in this car, you would struggle to believe it's 20 years old, both in terms of condition or design. I absolutely love the E46M3 interior, and it's even nicer to see one in this condition as opposed to seeing my own, which is frankly quite baggy compared to this. The bolsters on the seat are really nice and tight. And the Napa leather presents in original condition. This is exactly the kind of car that you'd be looking for if you're looking for a nice E46 M3 convertible. Right, I'm just gonna show you how cleanly this engine pulls. So we're in second gear, starting at 2K, and I'm just gonna plant it. <laughs> Oh, that is brilliant. That sounds so good. Got a lovely non resonating exhaust system here. Sounds absolutely amazing with the roof down. You get all that classic SV4 rasp, but also just a bit of bass, which the original system is missing. And you can cruise along nicely in traffic. What a gorgeous place to be, honestly. It's so rare to get an E46 M3 on the market that has all of these jobs done and all of these smaller bits tidied up as well. Now, Chenier runs SYM Valeting, which is one of the premier detailing and car care businesses in London. He specializes in underbody protection and cleaning, which makes him the perfect custodian to purchase an E46 M3 from, as you would have seen earlier. With that being said, let's run through a general buyer's guide for the E46 M3. Everyone talks about the big three, but this is really an outdated forum concept from about five years ago. These days, it's more like the big seven, and your biggest concern should start underneath the chassis, not the bonnet. E46 M3s can develop concerning levels of rust, even the shiny looking ones. Rear arches corrode from inside out, as do the rear jacking points and sills. The trailing arm pockets can suffer too, so pay particular attention to these as it's hard to spot from the ground. Rear floor pans can suffer around the drain plugs, and subframes can gain huge amounts of surface rust but rarely fail structurally, so don't be alarmed. Front wings can often rust, but replacements are easily fitted and fairly affordable. Moving on to other visual inspections, wheels can be contentious. If the car has CSL style wheels, check that they're genuine, and if they're reps, make sure they aren't cracked. The standard, polished, lacquered Star 67 19 inch wheels are often refurbished with a diamond cut. This physically etches away a small portion of the wheel's surface to reveal fresh, shiny metal underneath, and is a process that can only be done a few times before the wheel becomes structurally unsafe. Chenille's set has only been done once, which is fairly rare these days. Aside from the wheels, the mirrors are electrochromatically auto dipped. However, the liquid inside can eventually leak, causing brown spots in the glass. If this happens, it's only a matter of time before the corrosive liquid escapes its housing, ruining your center console, your mirror caps, and your day. If you see this, budget to get them done with a specialist such as Mirror John. Inner rear lights can fade, but deeper replacements look the part and cost about 45 quid, so don't be alarmed. Left hand side LEDs on the face of models can gain water ingress, leading to failed LEDs. Genuine replacements are getting a deer these days, and the LEDs can't be repaired individually. Moving on to the drivetrain, let's start with that engine. I want to state for the record that the S54 is a fairly stout engine and only actually has one inherent design flaw. You have to remember this is basically an M50 B20 from a 1993-20i, bored out of 3.2 litres and given enough compression, throttle and timing to develop more than 100 horsepower per litre, and was developed in the 90s. Considering that, the fact that you can daily drive one of these is pretty remarkable. With that said, the S54's only inherent flaw is a head gasket. Due to the tight bore spacing, the head gasket can fail between cylinders, regardless of use or servicing, resulting in a misfire at 2 to 3K under load. No overheating symptoms will come from this, and the head doesn't need to be skimmed on replacement, but it's always recommended. To withstand 8,000 RPM, BMW use solid lifters, which require adjustment on every inspection to service. 
This can cost around £800, so make sure it's been done on time. Leave it too long and you could end up scoring the cams. Don't ask me how I know. Vanos issues could be indicated from excessive top-end ticking, misfires or hesitation under load at low revs. Rectification could be anything from a seal kit to a full unit replacement and issues can run into four figures. Vanos is a huge topic, too big to cover here, but it's a subject well trodden online. Finally, rod bearings, the most talked about S54 issue. S54s rev to 8000 RPM and are built for track use in mind. To withstand a heat and hard use, BMW rightly spec'd a 10 weight 60 oil, which is extremely thick when cold. They also fitted a handy oil temp gauge. Unfortunately, some choose to ignore it, utilizing that rev range before the oil is warmed up and thin enough to fully lubricate the tightly clearance bearings. This can cause bearing on crank contact, leading to failure, which is catastrophic for the engine. Good used S54s run for five grand plus, so you can see why this is a concern. A well cared, regularly warmed up and serviced S54 should have its bearings last a lifetime, but for the sake of around a thousand pounds, it's worth replacing them for peace of mind. While you're there, you also get an oil service, a new sump gasket, an oil temp and level sender, and engine mounts, so it's hardly a wasted job. Don't be put off if a car hasn't had them done, just budget for their replacement as part of the purchase. My first E46 M3 had 250,000 miles in it and still ran its original bearings, which looked brand new when we removed them. Moving towards the rear of the car, the Getrag 420G six speed gearbox is an extremely stout, heavy duty overkill item for the S54's output. It's the same gearbox used on the Toyota Mark IV Supra and E39 M5. It can withstand a lot of abuse, but sometimes a third gear synchro can wear out, leading to crunchy shifts. This isn't terminal for the gearbox, but the only way to fix the issue is a full replacement. Past that, the diffs can get a bit graunchy on tight corners. This is typical in low mileage or overly pampered cars. The diff needs to regularly lock up to ensure good oil circulation. Before panicking, try driving and repeat opposing figures of eights at low speeds to distribute the oil across the clutch plates. The subframe which houses the diff bolts onto a boot floor which is hugely unspecced for the E46M3's torque output, and as a result, the mounting points develop cracks around them. Ignore any assertions of inspections, every E46M3 will need the steering. The earlier you catch it, the cheaper it will be as the corrosion can develop around the newly formed cracks leading to repair cost doubling. Reedish plates are the gold standard and hard driven cars benefit from a brace welded inside the boot as well. Put off by all of this? Don't be. The E46 M3 is worth it. In return for your initial investment, you get the most iconic modern M car ever produced, delivering an analog, tactile and sonorous delight of a car. From a track car to a comfortable GT daily, the E46 M3 does it all. It's the last naturally aspirated straight six M3. It carries iconic looks and iconic noise a gorgeous interior and one of the best chassis balances ever made at any price point. There's a reason why you've heard so much about these cars. They really are that good. The E46 M3 is a hero you really should meet and the prices are worth paying. So what are those prices? Well, before I get into that, I want to say you shouldn't be put off by an M3 that hasn't had any big jobs done. You don't need to get it done all in one go and aside from the rod bearings and the head gasket, none of the issues will result in instant catastrophic failure. I would happily buy a completely unrestored E46 M3 and prices start around 10 grand for those, but expect them to owe you around 15 grand after preventive maintenance and initial repairs. 15 grand gets you a low to mid mileage car with some preventive maintenance. If you want everything done alongside any sort of special spec, history or miles or additional above and beyond tidying like Chenille's car, I would expect to pay around 18 to 25 grand. This end of the market is actually where the greatest value for money lies, as it would usually cost you around 25 to 35 grand to get a typical example up to this sort of standard. That's certainly the case here with Chenille's, which has more than 30,000 pounds of receipts over the last few years. The conclusion is, if you want one of these, just do it. They're completely and utterly beguiling to drive, live with and look at. The bills aren't small, but if you make sure your purchase price reflects the work that has or hasn't been done, you should be in for fairly steady residuals and a fantastic ownership experience. If you fancy one of the tidiest, best sorted and most cherished E46 M3 convertibles I've ever seen, then hop onto Shooting Brake and get a bid in for Chenille's E46 M3. The reserve is set attractively considering the work done and you'll struggle to find another example like this. If you have any questions about buying an E46 M3, leave a comment and we'll be sure to answer it to the best of our ability. Keep an eye on our YouTube channel for more videos about the cars that you love. And as always, check our website regularly to make sure you don't miss out on your dream car. See you next time.